Today we're going to be talking about integrals as net change or applications of integ integrals with particles. So we know that if we have our position function, then velocity is the derivative of position and acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which is also equal to the second derivative of position. So now to get position, I, again, I think about it as layers, and I said this when I originally introduced this to you. To get position, we integrate our velocity function dt. And then our velocity function, just as a reminder, is the integral of acceleration. Okay, it's important that you understand the difference between all of these concepts. Displacement is the change in position from start to end of time. So, I'm a cat, this is my house, this is De La Salle High School, and I walk along the path do, 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 to De La Salle, and then I turn around, and I walk back to my house. So my displacement is technically zero. Change in position from start to end time. My displacement is technically zero. But the total distance I traveled is the amount of miles I walked. So 0.88 times two, which is 1.76 miles. So displacement is the integral a velocity over your time over the time interval with respect to time versus total distance is the absolute value of velocity with respect to time okay the integral and this is important to know final position is your initial and I think I spelled initial wrong yeah, I forgot nine there initial position plus your displacement. Okay, so say you have an initial position of five and you've traveled negative seven, your final position would be negative two. Okay, so let's do some examples involving this. So the function uh, from zero to six is our velocity function, so our V of T, and notice how I give us units, is a particle moving along the x-axis. Determine when the particle is moving left, right, or stopped. Remember, left is when velocity is less than zero. Right is when velocity is greater than zero. And stopped is when velocity equals zero. So this is really a question that we've done before. So I set my velocity function equal to zero. At the same time, I'm going to factor out a three. Okay, and then I'm going to continue doing some factoring. And then I do, we are stopped when velocity equals zero. So we're stopped at t equals four and six seconds. Now I'm going to do a little number line chart where I'm looking at what our velocity is doing. 0, 4, and 6. Now again, you can just look at what this graph looks like. This graph is a parabola with its zeros being 4 and 6, so it opens up. So my velocity is positive on that interval, negative and positive again. So we are moving left when our velocity is negative, so that's from 4 to six, and we're moving right from zero to four, and from, oh, and that's it, because our time stops at six. I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay, next example, or next piece of this example, I should say. 
So find the particle's displacement for the given time interval. And then, so displacement, remember, is just my integral of velocity. And then I'm going to have to find the final position. So let's integrate velocity over our time interval. So when I integrate, and I'm doing this without a calculator, but I'm stealing a look at my notes so I don't make a mistake. Okay, so then I plug in 6, and I plug in 0, and we get 108 minus 0. So my displacement is 108 meters. And then my final position is I take my 108 meters and I add to it 7 to get 115 meters. Lastly, we're looking for total distance. Remember, total distance is the absolute value of velocity with respect to time. So honestly, what I would do is I would take your velocity function, take the absolute value of that, and plug this into your calculator. If you need help plugging in the absolute value in your calculator, let me know. Once I plug that in my calculator, I got 116 meters. What you could also do is you have to split this up. So we kind of already have done that work. Split it up into 0 and 4 because that's when it's that's when our particle's velocity stops and our particle's moving positive then. Then you take and we add to it the absolute value on the outside from 4 to 6 of our velocity function. Oh, and I forgot my DT. Got my DT over here. So you could do that if you wanted. And but remember, you're taking and you're doing the absolute value outside. So this area is technically going to be negative, but you find the actual area, take the positive value and add it together. Notice how these two notations are different. These are two different things. Okay, our next example deals with a picture. So we are given, um, it's given its initial position. Units are in centimeters, okay, so I give you units. Its initial position is 15. Particle shows the graph's velocity. Um, so this is our velocity. Particle's displacement um, between 0 and C. Okay, so I'm looking for the total area under this curve. So I do 14 plus a negative 7, because any area underneath is negative, plus 10 is equal to 17 centimeters. Now, what is the total distance? The total distance, I would take the absolute value of all these. So I would take and add together all the values, making all of them positive, and I get 31 centimeters. Okay, our last example. We have data from an independent research company found according, found that annual cost per worker for an insurance was increasing according to a function. So the annual cost per coworker, so this is a rate question, where f of x is cost in dollars at time x, X is the number of years, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so X equals zero corresponds to 2,000. I need to find the total increase in costs. Okay, so remember this is a rate function. I'm looking for the total cost over the next five years. So it's just an integral. Zero to five of our function And again, I plug this in my calculator and I get 
792.58. So again, just plugging in your calculator. Okay, please for me, make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.